toxoplasty and sometimes you have to use a combination of those. Now looking at whether anterior lamellar keratoplasty has a, a role in ocular surface reconstruction, yes, Rishi showed you one of his patients and often we see these kind of patients often in young children and after chemical injury or thermal burns and they come back with you know, this kind of a uh, clinical picture and although we do uh, surface reconstruction procedures and we do limbal stem cell transplants, sometimes you require to do a corneal replacement procedure to optically clear the cornea and uh, for visual rehabilitation. The thing is that uh, the timing of surgery, whether you need to do it at the primary procedure when you are doing the limbal stem cell reconstruction, whether you need a corneal replacement procedure at that time or whether you would wait for the surface to recover and then do a corneal replacement surgery at a later date. And the technique, whether you do a penetrating keratoplasty or you do a deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. Now, Rishi showed you some of the techniques and this is one of the surgery where, you know, uh, in chemical injury again, uh, because the anatomical landmarks are not properly defined, often sometimes you would use something like a manual technique where you, where you go layer by layer and as you reach the deeper layer you can realize that this is at quite uh, a depth because you are able to peel off the cornea and that's the end point so you shouldn't attempt to go deeper than that. Sometimes you may have some micro perforations uh, which can easily be managed by putting an air bubble in the anterior chamber. And here, this was a unilateral injury, we took a conjunctival limbal autograph from the fellow eye with amniotic membrane and you know, that's the kind of outcome that you can see in these kind of cases when you do with anterior lamellar keratoplasty. Now, this is another patient with thermal injury. This is a patient uh, in a unilateral chemical injury. We did a anterior lamellar keratoplasty with conjunctival limbal autograph. And you can see that the post-operative outcomes are quite good. You can do it using a single graft or you can do it by the slip technique or you can even do it by uh, ex vivo culture of the limbal stem cell biopsy that you take from the fellow eye. This was another patient with this kind of, you know, uh, chemical injury, multiple surgery, and then with the, did a anterior lamellar keratoplasty, did well. We did publish a paper back in 2005 where we looked at the combined surgery, you know, doing a deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty along with conjunctival limbal autograft and amniotic membrane transplantation in unilateral se severe chemical injury, although a small series of seven eyes or seven patients. The results were quite favorable and with the follow-up of almost two years, uh, the, the outcome was quite good and the surface was stable and the average best corrected visual acuity was about 20 by 50. There was another paper uh, from Japan where they looked at limbal allograft along with uh, deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty and these were patients with bilateral limbal stem cell deficiency, included conditions like Steven Johnson syndrome and iridia. And even in these eyes, the DALK was performed using the visco dissection technique and using a 360 degree keratolimbal allograft and with immunosuppression uh, follow up of same about 18 months, all the eyes did pretty well along with systemic immunosuppression except for one eye with Steven Johnson that had persistent epithelial defect. So a DALK when you do a combined surgery at the same step uh, seems to work very well. However, a penetrating keratoplasty in this situation may not be very favorable because number one that the bed is very vascular, you have a lot of surgery that happens on the surface, the surface healing may take longer and at the same time, the risk of rejection would be higher. And it becomes an intraocular procedure, whereas when you do a DALK, it's more of an extraocular procedure. If you look at some of the papers that have looked at, you know, the outcome of uh, doing a surface reconstruction with or without penetrating keratoplasty, either at the primary surgery or doing it later, in this, they have found that when you combine with penetrating keratoplasty, the limbal stem cell graft does not survive very well as compared to doing a limbal transplant first followed by a penetrating keratoplasty uh, later. So they did not recommend doing a penetrating keratoplasty earlier. And this paper from uh, uh, LVP by Dr. Sangwan also looked at when you do an autologous limbal cultivated stem cell transplantation, if you combine it with a primary keratoplasty or if you do a keratoplasty two months later, they found that the recurrence of limbal stem cell deficiency was much higher when you combine the penetrating keratoplasty with the primary surgery. So this has been the difference between penetrating and DALK. With DALK, maybe yes, you can do the surgery, they kind of said the graft survives better, the surface is okay because you don't manipulate much. Whereas with penetrating keratoplasty, because it's an intraocular procedure, maybe the uh, immunological reaction and that is enhanced, and that could be the reason why the surface doesn't, you know, survive better. So, 
If you were to face with this problem, uh, sometimes uh, DALK seems to be the procedure of choice to manage corneal opacity in patients with ocular surface disease. As in the primary procedure or if you feel that the surgery is too extensive and you want to first stabilize the surface and do the uh, corneal procedure as a second stage, even that can be attempted. So this is short about uh, surface, uh, the role of anterior lamellar carotoplasty in surface reconstruction.